RJ, what are you doing now? Well, for the movie that you're doing, this would be perfect for the intro. I don't need a special intro for this. Oh, come on, boss. It'd be fun. Now, do you have a tuxedo you could wear? And maybe you could come back into the shot walking like a secret agent. Ow. Right here. here, and like most people, I've been accustomed to watching the trailers before actually watching the film. But for this next one, I never really saw any of the trailers for it. Spectre. As I said before, I didn't see any trailer for this movie. Now I did see the advertisements that are linked to the latest Bond film, but nothing really showing me the actual film itself. So for me, I just didn't know what I was getting myself into. Oh, babe. Shaker. Not star. The film begins with one of the best action-packed openings I've seen in a long time on board a helicopter over Mexico City during the Day of the Dead celebration. And I'm not gonna lie, this bit had me on the edge of my seat. The way they played this out was awesome, and the cinematography that built up to the fight made it to where I felt like this movie was gonna be a treat. Sadly, it kinda goes downhill from here. After that incident, we come back to MI6 where M, played by Ralph Fiennes, chastised Bond for his actions and basically puts him on suspension. M also informs James that the merger between MI5 and MI6 is most likely going to close down the 00 agency. The person that's responsible for this merger is Max Dinby, or C as Bond calls him. C wants to replace what he calls obsolete agents with field drones and surveillance type technology, pretty much like Big Brother. Well, Bond being Bond, he disobeys M's orders and goes rogue to try to uncover this dastardly plot that our main baddies have in store for the world. From a ring that he obtained during the opening fight sequence, he finds out that there's an underground crime organization called Spectre who is responsible for all the terrorist attacks that have been happening across the world. Along the way, we meet the latest Bond girl of the franchise, Dr. Madeline Swan, who is the daughter of Mr. White from Casino Royale. She's basically the key to lead Bond to the evil organization. After locating the bad guy's hideout, we are introduced to the ringleader of Spectre, Franz Oppenhauser, who goes by the name of Ernest Stavro Blofeld. Blofeld is basically James' adopted brother, and that he's responsible for all of Bond's misfortune in the past three films. And if I understood this right, he's jealous of Bond for getting all the attention from his father, who was Bond's legal guardian. Really? Anyway, he orchestrates his father's death and went into hiding to create his evil empire for the next 20 years. We find out later that C is in league with Spectre, and after the merger between MI5 and MI6, he intends to feed all secret intelligence to Blofeld. From here you can pretty much guess what happens. Our hero narrowly escapes, he destroys the hub of operations of Spectre, and returns to England to arrest C with the help of M, Q, and Moneypenny. And that's pretty much the plot of the film. While there's some good moments of action, the film's pacing suffers from a tremendous slowdown. I wanted to enjoy the film, but in the end I was going meh the whole time. I mean, there's no easy way to say this. I lost interest, to the point that I started checking my phone to see how much more time I had left. And to me, that's a bad thing. I enjoyed previous Bond films to a point. I won't go out of my way or say that I'm a Bond fan, but I never really had any huge complaints. But I've always watched these films on video, where I had the ability to hit the pause button. And God knows I wanted to hit that button so bad during the viewing of this film. The story didn't hold my interest at all, and the payoff at the end was just a bit lackluster. It was interesting to have Blofeld's origin story linked to Bond's past. And for those of you that don't know, that's 007's arch nemesis of the past films before they rebooted the franchise. And I could already hear what some of the Bond fans would say to me, that I'm just not sophisticated enough to enjoy this movie the right way. Fair enough, I'll admit straight up, the Bond franchise for me is a hit or miss. I know James Bond is a badass, and I respect Daniel Craig for his portrayal of the character since the franchise rebooted back in 2006. But I was teased with that opening sequence that I really thought this was going to be a real treat but it just ended up going downhill and it just bored me to death. So, my final recommendation? Wait till it comes out on cable. 
or Netflix. Now before I sign off today's episode, I would like to make an announcement that I'm changing my rating system only because I know that there are some people that just don't go to the movie theaters. With as expensive as they are over the last two decades, I really don't blame them. If the movie is awesome and I feel that you should see it as soon as possible, it will earn an A rating. If the film is great, worth seeing in a matinee or as soon as it comes out on video, then it earns a B. If it's alright and it's good enough to make a movie night out of it, then it's a C. If you got nothing better to watch and you're just bored and you just want to pass the time, then the movie earns a D. And lastly, if the movie is just straight up bad and you should avoid it like the next deadly epidemic, then it's a big fat F. So here it is, easy and simple. Well this wraps up this episode, if you have any thoughts or opinions, please comment below. You can also find my previous reviews, gameplay, and let's talk segment on peanutbutterdisaster.com where you'll find other producers and their content, so check them out. And finally, if you hadn't done so yet, hit the subscribe button below for more upcoming reviews. Oh hey babe, is that my drink? Is that shaking enough for you? I guess I deserve that. This is Faceless. Signing off. Peanut butter disaster. <laughs>